Good evening and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be covering the OXT token. What is ORCID VPN? Why is it different from other VPNs? And why I feel that this is one of the best investments I could have made for the short term and for the long term. So real quick, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do not listen to me. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the CEO from ORCID VPN did an interview with Edward Snowden about a month or two ago and one of the other executives from ORCID as well, but they were just talking about the importance of data security and privacy in the future internet and how we would actually achieve that. What are the barriers in between where we are right now and how do we get there? Unfortunately, I couldn't download the video um, because my video editing software wouldn't let me. I just assumed that some type of control they put in so you couldn't, I guess, republish their video, which I completely understand. So I'm not gonna be posting that, but I am going to be attaching the link below in the description if you wanna go check that video out for yourself. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the product review and what I like about this particular product and their VPN. So what is ORCID VPN? We should probably start there. So ORCID VPN is a VPN network. It's a little bit different from a traditional VPN and I will explain why. So for people who are familiar with VPNs, virtual private networks, this is the traditional setup that you have. So I'm a customer, I have a VPN. So when I turn my VPN on, I it is supposed to be encrypted in the data is you know, you're not supposed to be able to harvest and mine that data or peer in to see what I am looking at when I am on the internet. Now, this was the original purpose and function of a VPN. For obvious reasons, the VPN market exploded because people wanted their data hidden and secure. Well, over time, I think a lot of people have realized that regardless of whether you have this setup or not, the internet service providers, who actually own the infrastructure when it comes to the towers, the data centers, all of the other things that go into making the network go. The people who own the infrastructure are in an advantage position to monitor and or restrict internet usage. So you just think about in certain areas across the country and across the world where you might want to get in and look at a particular website or watch a video and all of a sudden it's blocked by your internet service provider or by your cell phone provider or whatever it may be. That's definitely a problem right now, not so much in the United States, but more so in other countries. But if you're in the United States, just think about how much censorship that we've seen over the last year. Think about how, how easy it is to just completely block someone from being able to obtain basic information. So that's automatically a problem. And, and an another issue with this is that those internet service providers, again, they own the infrastructure, they own the hardware. So is there really a system of checks and balances to make sure that even though it's encrypted from outside viewers, hopefully, is your data still right there out in the open for the internet service providers, the cell phone providers, and the companies that actually own the infrastructure that you make all of your, that you browse the web through, that you make your phone calls through, and that you do everything online through? You know, the, the companies, the internet service providers, the, the people that own the infrastructure, are they, do they have your best interest at heart? Do you believe that they're not currently mining your data and looking into your data and selling it to third parties? We don't know. I don't have anything to say that they are doing that or that they're not doing that. All I'm saying is that the system itself does not have a system of checks and balances that would defend against that. So that's where the ORCID VPN comes in. And this is why I think it's going to revolutionize the space and it's just going to continue to grow over time. So as opposed to one VPN, when we're talking about centralized as opposed to decentralized, one VPN, you're really at the mercy of that VPN and what their other agreements are with their internet service providers on whether or not they'll share your data, how much data they are sharing, whatever it may be you're really at the mercy of the one VPN you're using and the internet service provider you are using. So that is what we call a very centralized type of the network, which is not in your best interest as the end user. 
I'll explain why. The ORCID market is a marketplace of VPNs. That's the best way to describe this. It has a bunch of different VPNs who are selling bandwidth and VPN services through these what they call nodes. Now these nodes just serve as bandwidth and VPN service providers. Now, how does a VPN like these different VPNs, VPN as secure networks, private internet access, how do these VPNs get on the ORCID net, uh, market? Well, they have to stake ORCID tokens. So if private internet access wants their VPN pushed out through the ORCID market to reach you, to get more exposure to people like you and me, they have to stake ORCID tokens. Now, the more ORCID tokens that they stake, the more visibility that their services get to the end users. So what does that do? Well, now they have some skin in the game when it comes to ensuring that everything that's done through the ORCID market, market that your data is kept secure and private, and that anything that they do to the contrary of what is in the client's best interest is automatically going to negatively affect the amount of business that they get. Because these are all ran by smart contracts. But in addition to that, there's full visibility on which VPNs are in the network and which other VPNs are available if one particular VPN starts having issues with, let's say, data breaches, or they're no longer providing the quality of services that they promote. If that does happen, what you have is a marketplace of other VPNs that you can go to. So that the whole concept of decentralization really shines through with the ORCID, market, ORCID marketplace. So if you go to the different VPNs that they have here, are these just no-name VPNs that are you know, startups and they don't have the infrastructure to support um, the client data that they're going to be encrypting? No. Look at private internet access right here. Private internet access was the number two VPN on top 10 VPNs for the best VPN in the USA behind ExpressVPN. So they do have real players, industry leaders that are going to be in the ORCID market competing for your business. So they're not just, they're not just in here taking your business for granted because you've continued to pay them the 10 bucks or whatever it is a month that you have to pay for VPN services. They are regularly competing for your business and having to stake OXT tokens while they do so. The more tokens that they have to stake and the more VPNs that are in the network, that only increases the price of the OXT token. And you, as a holder of OXT tokens, are going to benefit from that. Now, there's also another way that you can benefit from this is you can stake ORCID tokens for these VPNs also. Let's say that one of the smaller VPNs does not have the funds or the resources to put forward the ORCID tokens that maybe another one does. But let's say that they have a, a contract out there that allows end users like myself or like you to stake tokens for them to help boost their exposure. Well, it, it, it does discuss in here, if you go on the ORCID website, it discusses a revenue sharing type of a contract with some of these VPNs and how ideally they move to that type of a model. Now, I think it's going to be VPN by VPN. I think the VPNs that need that additional exposure will engage in those revenue sharing contracts with the end users like us so we can stake OXT, help them get more exposure and get rewarded from that in a form of a revenue share type of a contract. So it's a, it's, it incentivizes the end user, myself and the VPN to everything, the entire structure, the entire process incentivizes both parties to continue doing their part and continue investing in the network and to continue providing great services to the end user because anything to the contrary is going to get them knocked down. It's going to hurt their business. And this is providing, when, when you see this level of competition between vendors, you know you're going to get better service and you know you're going to get a better price. Competition just as a general concept of business and economics. Competition drives down prices and competition does increase the overall level of, of customer service because now you have people competing for your business. So these are all considered nodes. 
when you when you hear the word node on an ORCID network, all this is is another company providing bandwidth and VPN services. So you put up X amount of ORCID tokens or a fraction of an ORCID token, and these particular companies have to stake ORCID tokens, and you pull up the ORCID app on your phone, you see the different VPNs that are available, and you get to choose your path. You can go from boom, boom, and over here, you can choose whichever path that you want. You can go straight through one particular VPN. Now, all the internet service provider sees, now this is very important. This goes back to the thing that we were talking about earlier. So these internet service providers, the ones that own the infrastructure, they can see a lot of information. If, even, if you, if, even if you are on a VPN, because they own the hardware, they can see a lot of information. So if you are on the ORCID network, however, the only thing that they can see is that some transaction happened with a wallet from here that went to the ORCID network. That's all they can see. So automatically hiding a substantial amount of more information than what a traditional VPN does while giving you access to multiple VPNs while they're all competing for your business. And they have to become, they have to stake OXT. Again, the more people that do that, the more companies that do that, and the more, company, the more companies in the network is just going to increase the price of OXT over time. So let's see here, last point. So getting into why I love this as far as a short-term and a long-term investment, if you just look at OXT, so this was a few days ago. It was at 42 cents. I believe it's in the 30s now, even a better price. I think my average buy-in price was like 43, 44 cents. And I still feel great about that. You know, obviously I wasn't expecting it to dip as much as it did this past weekend. So when I bought, I thought it was at a relatively, I didn't, I thought it was going to settle out at that price. But even though my average buy-in price is 44 cents, I still feel great about it short-term and long-term. Because if you see here, it's only 600 million coins in circulation and they're only going to put out a billion coins. So over half of the amount of tokens are already out there. And the price right now is, is relatively small. Now, keep in mind, just like AMP tokens, this entire setup that they have, this process that they've structured is structured around staking ORCID tokens. ORCID tokens are the thing that run this network. So they're constantly being used. They're being used to push out whichever VPN is providing the highest stake. And they're being used on the customer's end in certain situations to stake OXT to help these VPN providers get more exposure and to hopefully receive some type of return for doing that. So there's just numerous different areas here where I feel like this is a great investment. Again, 600 million OXT tokens already circulating. They're only going to make a billion. And the entire ORCID network is ran on OXT tokens and will continue to be done like that over time. And as more and more people get on ORCID, download the ORCID app. Also, this is news, Android just announced that they're adding the ORCID app to their app store. So that's going to open up a whole nother pool of clients to them because there's a lot of countries that don't have uh, iPhones, and they only have Androids. So again, the, 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 the possibilities here are endless for Orchid VPN. And I feel like as far as an investment, even if they were at 50 cent right now, I would still feel good about this investment. I think it's going to continue to grow. I think people who own OXT tokens, the value is only going to grow over time. And my, I don't see any other VPN providers or services out there that provide the level of services or that have the amount of options and decentralization that ORCID does. So with qualified providers, it's not like these are no-name companies that are working out of their mom's basement. These are legitimate providers of VPN services that have ranked all the way up to number two on the top 10 VPN list. So this is a great investment for me. Do not take my advice on this. Again, this is just solely for entertainment purposes and for educational purposes. But I, I love Orchid as far as an investment. It just got added to the Android 
uh, phone as far as their app store. It's been on the Apple app store. It's the only VPN type service that I know of on the crypto space as of right now. It solves a real problem with centralization with one VPN and one or two internet service providers. It allows you to access information that may be blocked on your current internet service provider and it, and it blocks them from being able to see really anything other than you made a transaction with Orchid and that's it. So I love Orchid VPN. They have 90, I think, employees out in California. I think some of them are spread out through all over the country. But if you looked on their LinkedIn page, you can see this is a legitimate company. They are staffing up and they're doing interviews with Edward Snowden on, link, on, uh, on YouTube. The, 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 the possibilities here are endless. And I think that this is Orchid in its infancy. I imagine the price will continue to go up and down. I think there's gonna be a lot of wealthy investors interested in getting a lot of the early token holders out because they see the long-term picture here for Orchid. They know it's going to be probably the industry leader in the VPN space, not just for end users like me, but also for corporations or for different businesses who don't want their information being continually spied on. Maybe they want to get on and do something you know, private. They wanna make a transaction. They wanna do, they wanna visit a site or do whatever it may be and not have to worry about their internet service provider spying on them. Or let's say that they're somewhere where they can't access information because their internet service provider is blocking it. Again, the ORCID network comes in perfect right there and gives them the ability to do things that they were not able to do before that. So again, just an, an endless reasons why I love this product and why I'm gonna to continue to invest in this product. I'll continue to buy the wrong dip, I'm sure, as I did this past weekend. Um, but nevertheless, I feel like even at my current buy-in price, it's still going to go significantly above that in the next 12 months and beyond. So that's been my take on Orchid VPN. Again, do your own research. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, if I got anything wrong, please feel free to correct me. Or if I missed anything, I obviously didn't cover everything. I tried to do as much as I could. Um, please feel free to let me know in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe. And let me know what's the next thing that you would like me to do. I'm going to just do a, a product review going over the features and functionality of whatever application it is. And because that's what I want this channel to be about is going over, okay, yes, there's a token on an app that says that you can buy this at this price, but is there anything behind that token? Is that price backed up with a real world product? And that's what I wanna do on this video. So please like, share and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and let me know what you would like to see next. So take care, have a good night and I will see you in the next one.